Horrid Ashi, The Universes of Wonder, 1217. This is a world forged in the fires of conflict and quenched in crimson blood. None who walk these lands do so with a clean spirit, for the endless tumult scars all. This is a story whose end is not yet known, and perhaps is a story with no end at all. Our story begins here. High atop the incinerated towers, a long forgotten monolith whose twin crowns of fire lay long dormant. In this place, a small yet bold group of people has chosen to embark on a quest. A quest to save Ord Ashi. Okay, here we go. Who's ready for a bit of an adventure? I know these people are, but first we should do a little bit of unpacking just as an explanation. And while we do that, we're also gonna be moving around the settlement here and building some new structures. This place here has a long way to go before we can call it home. And I think we'll start out with some more lumber. We've already used all the wood we had on this one structure. Now then, anyways, this group. Seven individuals with a mixed assortment of animals alongside them. Each has their own individual stories and reasons for being here, but they also share quite a bit of experience as well some recent experience in a dwarven fortress known as Chamber Point, which has fallen not too long ago either. Now, I should note that Chamber Point was not a beloved home for these people. It could be an okay place if you kept your blinders on and didn't put up much of a fuss, but it was going downhill for a long time. It was controlled by a necromancer, an ancient wizard wielding corpse magic. Now, necromancers in Oradashi have an interesting past, and have only recently begun being seen as evil. And for good reason, too. The world is under threat, as we speak, by the forces of Scorch Fountain and its beardless baron, a necromancer. For quite some time now, they've been ravaging the land, destroying everything in sight, and claiming everything that's not destroyed. Chamber Point was a fortress founded on the premise of fighting back against this threat. But that fortress too was eventually taken over by a necromancer, one who claimed to be an ally. But they were able to twist the goal of Chamber Point away from saving the world to meet his own goals. And that's exactly why these people here have pledged themselves to the idea of ridding the world of foul necromancy. Life in Ordashi is hard enough as it is without necromancy, but we have to work together to preserve a better future for us all. Now then, to the task at hand. We've scoured the mountainside and now have a bunch of lumber to use. Probably chopped down a dozen or so trees over the past 24 hours. And now we're going to head back to our outpost and start work on another structure. We'll still need enough bedrooms for all our people here. Seven people, as I said. And so I think we'll start out with a small, just a housing structure right over here. Double tiered, four bedrooms. Just like that right there. Didn't take too long. 11 hours with everyone helping. We'll have a closer look in a bit, but first we're gonna head over here and make a second structure. And this one's gonna be sort of a, a workshop and storage area combined, fairly sizable. And it will need to be. Gotta put a carpenter workshop in there. And yeah, it would be nice to have a little storage area for less important items. Maybe spare food and drink, extra furniture, or items we find on our travels perhaps. I'm sure we're gonna be bringing home a whole bunch of crap. And there we go, looking pretty good. All these structures are two levels high. Nice vaulted roofs. We're gonna be here a while, so we're trying our best to make things comfortable, even though we're well aware that this task is not intended to be a comfortable one. Gotta try our best. Hold up, just over there. Look, you see that? It's an intelligent undead, one of the godborn from that fortress that fell. Must have followed us here. That's Rigoth, we know her. I'm not too sure what she's doing here though. Hopefully she doesn't want trouble. She's not approaching, she's not doing a damn thing going to call out to her. Rigoth, our cause is just. Just standing there. Does not look aggressive, though she is armed with an iron battle axe. I don't think she could put up much of a fight, so we'll keep an eye on her for now. It could be that Rigoth is here to join us. The undead aren't known to be particularly talkative, so it's hard to say for sure. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't appear to be particularly aggressive. Okay. You could stay for now, Rigoth. We could use your help. Anyways, okay, let's get back to it. At this point here, we're gonna have to start putting down some furniture. You need to make a carpenter workshop, it's all a big pain in the butt. 
but we'll get it done before long. After all, it only took us about a week to get this entire place settled. With all these hands helping, everything goes quickly. The next thing on our agenda after we get this place all settled is that we've spotted a tower to our west, a necromancer's tower. We don't know anything about it other than it's there, and that it's kind of strange that it's there. Right now, we're incredibly far away from civilized lands, out here in elven territory. It could well be that this tower's been here for centuries now, hidden away. It could well be that it's way more than anything we could handle, but it's still worth a look. Yeah, we'll have that scouted out after we get things settled here a bit. And truthfully, this part is a little bit more of a pain in the butt than I thought it was going to be. Gotta move all these logs around here. And none of our animals will accept a load. The horn beetles, the grizzly bears, the giant rattlesnakes. Not working. Such stubborn animals. The only animal that will carry anything is our old three-hoofed mule, Godin. Don't really like making the guy carry so much, but he's willing and we need his help. Yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle, but it's getting done. Now, this is interesting right here. Just happened to be walking out the back of the base when over here on the other side of this ridge, we see a camel carrying some items. I don't know why it would be here other than, I don't know, do you think maybe Rigoth brought it when she came to our little outpost here? That's weird. That's really weird. Huh. Well, I don't see anybody else around. I have to assume Rigoth brought this. A bit of an olive branch, I guess. Hell, we'll take it. Very helpful. Oh yeah, would you look at that? All kinds of stuff. Man, oh man. Weapons, armor, clothing, some furniture, seeds. Not that we could do much with that. Hmm. I imagine this was a merchant's animal. Okay. We'll get this stuff taken off and put in our storage room. Just wonderful. Okay. We've let some time pass and have got things a little bit more settled. Made some new furniture. And we're now enjoying a nice rest here in our main hall. And before we head out to check out that tower, I'm thinking we should make this camp here into an official outpost. We have to name our group, as well as choose a leader. But I think that decision's already been made. Ted, the one who kind of took command of this group here, has already kind of taken the position of leader. Everyone looks to her for guidance, so whether she likes it or not, it's gotta be the case. The name of this outpost here is Chamber Point. The same name as that fortress that we left, the one that fell in shame. It was originally named after a friend of some of these people here, and they've decided to reclaim the name in order to bring honor to it. But our group is another matter entirely, and so we'll settle on a name that describes our group's goal. That goal being to watch over the land and rid it of necromancy. You who have gathered here today to help found this place, you who have survived the terrors of Old Chamber Point, I pledge to you to lead you justly, and to a bright new future, here in New Chamber Point. We are the Watchful Eyes, and may necromancers hide from our gaze. Ted Anyamil, the Testries warrior, is now in control of New Chamber Point, ruling the Watchful Eyes from the Hall of Warriors, the name of our main hall here. This is the start of something great, a bright new future for Ord Ashi. Here we go. Today is the day we head out to get some scouting done. A cold afternoon on the 12th of Opal, 1217, midwinter. Took us a little longer than anticipated to get ready, but as you can see, we're now on the road. And today we're westward bound on our way to scout out a necromancer's tower. As you can see, there's only a couple of us here. Ted the Testry's warrior, along with our horn beetle, Blunted Hatchet, alongside Amiwa, the elven risen stalker, and his mount, the giant rattlesnake newly named Saber Vine. I imagine these four will be quite formidable if they run into any trouble. They're fairly skilled with their weapons, though only lightly armored. We decided to only go with these two here just because, well, the others can fight, but we have to leave some people home to defend the place. Plus, we have Rimtar the dwarf who's not doing so well these days. Not too sure what's going on with him. Some sort of infection, maybe. Doesn't look good. And the Gorlax really aren't into this sort of thing most of the time anyways. It'll be fine. Just a standard scouting mission here anyways. Now then, Having a quick look at our gear, Ted's equipped with her standard armor, a horn beetle kite and helmet, gauntlets, and greaves, as well as some other leather bits. And she's also wielding Kosiaspku Zoliasma, her trusty two-handed silver sword. And she also has a wombat leather backpack that luckily was brought by that camel there. 
And as for Amiwa, he's equipped with a silver flail and bismuth bronze buckler, the buckler gotten from that camel, as well as his bismuth bronze greaves and an iron cap. Pretty lucky there. He wouldn't have had any armor otherwise. All right now, time to focus. It's already getting late in the day, and we'll probably have to camp out here for the night. I don't really want to approach a necromancer's tower in the middle of the night. Wouldn't be smart. It seems pretty peaceful out here anyways. I don't think we'll run into any trouble. And we were correct. 13th of Opal, and approaching the tower. Let's do this. Something I'm noticing before we get there is that the rattlesnake is much, much slower than the horn beetle. Not sure that'll come into play at any point, but it's something to keep in mind. Oh yeah, look at that. The snake does seem to have trouble keeping up even. We'll be careful though. Oh, here we go. Um, we could see a large structure here, just off the side of this ridge. It's made of stone, appears to be roughly square in shape, and is very, very tall. And yet, I don't think this is the necromancer's tower. Looking off in the distance, there appears to be structures like this all over the place, dotting this whole area. It's like a huge compound. Hoping this doesn't get too dangerous. Let's move out. As a slow remember, we're going to have Amiwa take point for now. Heading down off the side of this ridge here and up to the building. Not hearing anything inside. No signs of life at all. Or signs of unlife, for that matter. Well, let's continue. Yeah, there doesn't appear to be very much at all in here. For how big this compound is, it's kind of strange, don't you think? Maybe something happened here. I would think that such an advanced necromancer's tower would be bustling with activity, but that just does not appear to be the case. It could well be that the forces here were wiped out long ago. Maybe this place is older than we thought. Hmm. <laughs> Vexing. Yeah, there are all kinds of structures all over the place, and I'm not sure we want to go into any of them quite yet. We'll stay outside for now, just for safety's sake. We've been through a good chunk of the compound, and couldn't help but notice this enormous ragged looking structure over here to the west, much older than these other smaller structures. Kind of have a feeling this might be the main necromancer tower. Not too sure what's giving away that vibe. A joke. Man, look at that thing. It is huge. That is definitely the main tower, without a doubt. Alright, let's check it out. Oh, oh, hold up. Signs of life, or unlife inside the tower. I'm just gonna sit out here for a second and see if we hear anything else. Who? uh, hmm. I did hear something else in there, and it looks like the snake was startled. It ran up here by itself. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like the snake does not like to be over there. Couldn't blame it, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what, seeing as how the rest of the compound seems to be fairly quiet, I said we go poking around out there first before we get into some serious trouble. Might as well, right? Yeah, there's these barrow mounds kind of surrounding the tower. This one here is pretty small and is kind of a pyramid in shape. I don't hear anything inside, so I'll assume it's safe. Let's see. Looks to be a silver floor hatch here. Gotta dismount and head down. Hmm. Interesting chamber, a whole bunch of pedestals and a couple of wooden chests up to the north. And <laughs> It's pretty easy to tell even from this distance that they're both trapped. Clumsy traps. Still, gotta be worth a look though, right? Yeah, I can see inside this one at least that there's some pretty good stuff. Some steel boots, bronze gauntlets, ooh, and another backpack too. This would all be perfect for Amiwa. Alright, gonna try for it. Here goes nothing. There we go, easy enough. Just gonna grab a few things out of here. And what the hell, we'll try our hand at this other trap as well. Oh, 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 careful, careful. We've triggered the trap, but the arrow missed Ted, thankfully. Careful, Ted, please. Well, that's pretty interesting right there. In this chest, there's a steel battle axe. And having a look at it, there's helmet snake venom on it. Very unique. Yeah, we'll be taking that as well. My god, be careful, Ted, will you? A second arrow just barely missed her. Yeah, let's get out of here. Well, that's worrisome. I think we may have just heard something down below, in the entrance chamber where we first entered. I don't know what the hell that could be though. It could just be a mistake. <laughs> okay, never mind. Just blunted hatchet. The beetle. Okay, never mind. False alarm. Little on edge out here, I suppose. 
Ted goes outside and waits impatiently for the snake to crawl its way out. Man, that thing's terribly slow. Oh well, it's reliable enough. Let's go find some more barrows, huh? Got some surprisingly good things out of this one. Barrow number two. Gonna have to dismount again. Heading through the door, uh, looks to be a small round chamber with a column in the middle. Nothing too spectacular. Heading up, we have another small chamber. This one with a couple of glass display cases and a couple of bags, one of which is obviously trapped again. <laughs> I can see inside this bag here to the north, and inside there's a steel shield, which is pretty good. I should not risk triggering this trap, though. Yeah, we'll just bypass it. Just a shield. Heading into this back chamber, uh, we have a bag, and inside there's some horse leather armor as well as another backpack. Handy. We'll snag them. And... Oh, I really want this shield. Feeling risky. Let's do it. Ah, there we go. Not a single issue. A yoink? Wonderful. Now let's hit the road. Come, snake. Man, these animals can be hard to manage. I wish there was some place to tie them up outside, but not the case. Oh, well. So how about that? Got some more great stuff. And actually, I didn't tell you what we got from that first place. Too. In that first barrow, Amiwa found a pair of steel gauntlets, as well as a pair of steel low boots. And now, a steel shield. Better armored by the second. To the next barrow. Barrow number three. Okay, pretty narrow. Standard. Tall, very tall. Oh, actually, this isn't a barrow at all. It was a tower. Don't know how I missed that, but here we are. Yeah, there's a long staircase here. We're dismounting. Um, at the top, we have a longer chamber with some garbage on the ground. I'm gonna check what's through this door. Mm, another long chamber. This place is a little more complex than the last couple barrows. Ooh, a steel short sword. Take that. Heading down this stairway, and we have a menacing red door here. Heading through, and... Oh, it's Sabervine. <laughs> this stairway connects up back here. Let's get the hell out of here. Easy enough. <laughs> Except, we forgot the beetle inside. There you go. Okay, Ted got him. What do you say? One more building? This almost seems like all reward, no risk at all. Gotta be worth it, right? Let's go. Alright, fourth structure. This one is a barrow. Let's go in. Dismounting? We have a large chamber here. Another weapon trap. Hmm. Got a steel cap here. Not bad. Heading up to this top chamber, and there's some statues. The one directly in front of us is a marble statue of a mer person. A good aligned creature, half human, half fish. Our former home, Old Chamber Point, was settled on the coast of the Sea of Lace, where legend says mer people used to live. It was said that it was a good omen if one was ever spotted, but we never saw any at Chamber Point. This is the closest we've come, actually. As good an omen as any, I suppose. I'll take it. Heading down. And into this back room where there's not much of anything. Didn't get much, but. A steel cap and a good omen is better than nothing. Let's get out of here and, you know what? I think it's time we stop messing around. That good omen's gotta mean something, right? What do you say? Might as well take advantage. Let's head over. Carefully, too. On the approach here now, and realizing how strangely this whole thing is set up, this tower is actually dug down into the ground. There's a square pit around it. And we're heading around, but... Ah, here we go. Looks to be a ramp down over here, hmm, which takes us out to the front of the tower. Haven't heard any noises this time around, but I'm sure it won't take long. Yeah, don't hear anything quite yet. Hmm, guess I thought the entrance was around the back here, but nope. Wow, this is a weird shaped structure. Extremely irregular. All kinds of nooks and crannies. All right, yeah, I guess we're just going around the entire structure. Oh, hold up. I just heard something inside. I don't know what that was. Kinda hard to tell. Let's continue. Okay, here we are. The front of the building. We could see an aperture leading in. Let's just, uh, hold up here a second. Weird. It's gone totally quiet inside. The saber vine seems calm. Not all antsy like before. That's gotta be a good sign, right? <laughs> okay. Heading in. Still very quiet. Don't hear a damn thing. 
grouping up. Very dark in here, hard to see much of anything. Makes things a bit risky. Okay, heading around this main floor here, and we can see a number of doors, as well as stairways leading upwards. Not much else though, no items, no furniture. Still no sounds at all. Gonna take a while to explore this place properly, I think. Well, 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 look what we have here. A necromancer, an interesting necromancer. He's a dwarf with extremely long white hair, a narrow head, tan skin, aquamarine eyes. His nose is missing. And the most striking feature I'm noticing is that this guy has no beard. This is a beardless necromancer. Brings to mind that beardless Baron of Scorch Fountain. More interesting still is that this necromancer is carrying a bin. A dwarf bone bin, seemingly. An artifact. You know, this whole time we had it built up in our minds that we'd be killing necromancers. But this one just seems so puny. Let's talk to him. Hello, necromancer. I am Ted Anyamil. I am Bomrek. I've come to this place because what you necromancers do is abhorrent. People need to be free. Truly. Quit walking away, will you? I am the bane of Twistbeard the Pious, who lies dead, now only an embarrassing memory. And the goblin said, are you going to eat that? As they walk off into darkness, quit walking away. Listen up. You're wasting time. Not a fan of jokes, huh? Here, I've got another. So the horse is in this is that Kamka's beast. Identify yourself. You bastard. The necromancer is trying to throw us off our guard, just now realized. Looking up at that stairway he's heading towards, I just realized now there's a creature coming down. And it does not appear to be friendly. It's a muscular, hamster man, damned one. Looks to be pretty beaten up, thankfully. And it does not appear to be in the mood for talking. Or jokes, for that matter. Oh, and it's terribly fast. All right, straight to it. That was an explosive attack right there. Lopped its head off, but as soon as I did, the necromancer brought both the head and its body back to life, and blunted hatchet took a hit, taking a step back. And in doing so, the beetle crushed the head and the body, but the bodies come back. The necromancer's trying to run past us now. <laughs> Not so fast. Slashed him real good in his leg. Let's finish this. Easy enough, really. Both of them have been taken down. Now, where the hell's Amiwa, though? Oh boy, that explains it. it. Looks like Sabervine's not doing so well. Extremely panicked, refusing to go anywhere. Amiwa keeps trying to mount up, but the snake just throws him off. Well, really not too sure what we could do about that, even. I'll tell you what, Amiwa. We'll have you wait here with the snake, and Ted's going to head in by herself. Let's go, Blunted Hatchet. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like we have that dwarf bone bin now. A grizzly thing, but something worth bringing home, I say. Also, you know what? I'm not too sure what else is in this building, or if we've alerted anyone else, but it would be smart to take these corpses outside. If there's another necromancer and piles of corpses around, then, well, we could run into some serious trouble. So, yeah, we're gonna do that. We'll bring the bodies outside. Just a moment here. Okay, easy enough. Those corpses are taken care of. We brought that bin outside, too. Amiwa's over here still, taking care of Saber Vine. Not too sure what we're gonna do with that, but they're just gonna stay down here for now. Anyways, yeah, let's continue. Gotta dismount again to get the horn beetle through these doors, which is kind of a pain, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Hmm, <laughs> okay. We head into this back room and it looks like Amiwa's coming with us now. Sure, whatever. Anyways, uh, a whole bunch of books and scrolls on the ground, and unfortunately neither Ted or Amiwa knows how to read, so it'd be kind of impossible to tell which ones have necromancer secrets in them. We're gonna have to take them all. They need to be destroyed, but we'll come back for them. First, we're going to scour this tower. You know, I'm willing to bet something happened here in the past, and I'd like to know what. It's just so empty. Nothing's out in the compound, nothing's in this tower, well, nothing besides those two. And yet this place seems like it was once extremely active. But yes, not seeing a whole heck of a lot in here. Just a bunch of books and scrolls, some tables, and strange architecture. We checked on the rattlesnake, but it's still freaking out. Continuing the search. Well, that's gonna do it right there. Didn't really find anything too exciting inside the tower. Just a whole load of books. A lot of them. Like, nearly 80 of them. 
That's a whole bunch, and I'm sure at least a few of them contain dark secrets. Secrets that we will remove from this world. Now the bad news. Sabervine. Not too sure what to do with a guy. Just panicking in there, won't do anything, can't even handle life, just completely frozen up. Can't mount him, can't lead him out of the tower even. The guy is just refusing everything, so I don't think we have a choice other than to just leave him there. Not that we want to, of course, but again, don't really have an option, so what are we going to do? There's a chance he comes out of it at some point and returns home, but I guess I'm not getting my hopes too far up. I don't know. We'll see what happens, I suppose. For now, I think we're going to go check out a couple more of those barrows and then return home. Might as well. We haven't gotten in nearly enough trouble yet. Well, that's what we call a mission well done right there. One necromancer down and a whole load of books ready to be thrown into a volcano. Not much else to be said, really, other than we did check out a few more of those barrows and managed to get some rather nice things. A whole bunch of steel gear, some armor, some weapons, nothing that Ted can wear unfortunately, but Amiwa, the dwarves, and maybe the Gorlax can wear it too. Couldn't be hard to find gear for Ted, I'm thinking. Oh, and we did manage to go and uh, get that merfolk statue as well. Don't ask how we're carrying it all. It's pretty cumbersome, but we're getting it done. And now we're on our way home. Three days, that's all it took. Easy as that. As for what's to come for the Watchful Eyes, well, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't really know. Obviously, we're going to have to go rooting out some more necromancers. There doesn't appear to be any in the immediate vicinity, but they're out there. That much is sure. We knew we'd have to go searching straight from the outset, and I'm sure it won't take that long. You know what? I think these two here actually make quite a good pair. Amiibo doesn't do too much talking, of course, but I don't think Ted minds that very much. <laughs> They're an odd couple, but they seem to be working out pretty all right. We do have another giant rattlesnake at home, but mm, might have to trade up for a nice horn beetle or possibly a grizzly bear. That'd be the smart decision, I think. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what adventures these two have in the future. Here's hoping we get to see them paired up again. I think one of the best things we could do at this point is go ask the surrounding elven civilizations if they know where necromancers are. You know, I've never even heard of an elven necromancer. I don't think any exist among them. Yeah, they would be the people to talk to. And I think that's going to be our next goal after we get these books dealt with. Should be fairly easy. Well, watchful eyes, we've done well here so far. Here's to a successful first mission and to many more in the future. May none escape the gaze of the watchful eyes. For Ored Ashi. Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome to the end of the episode where we're going to be talking about some behind-the-scenes things. An interesting turn here, heading into adventure mode. I know it's not up everyone's alleys, but I'm doing what I like. And frankly, this is actually a bit more interesting than I thought it would be. It's pretty cool to have this wide cast of characters, each with slightly different stories, and just seeing kind of how they intertwine and interact. I'm curious to see where it goes from here, hoping they don't all end up dying stupidly. That would be pretty lame. Also, might try to push the whole uh, adventure mode thing in strange directions. Kind of maybe test out some things I haven't done before. Multiple camps around the map. Not sure how that would work. Maybe making fortresses. Play as a dwarf fortress for like an episode. Might be interesting. I don't know. Still figuring things out. Let me know what you want to see down below. Let's get crazy. Now then, observations for this episode, that necromancer tower compound area was pretty strange. Whenever I've gone into those places in the past, they're loaded with zombies, especially a big place like that. I still am not too sure what happened there, but maybe if we can read some of these books, being very careful while doing so, we can find out. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Oh, and something I just remember that was really cool was that steel battle axe that was smeared with helmet snake venom. I haven't seen that before, didn't even know it could happen. Might have to test out cutting some poor bastard with that. That would be very interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped up about this whole thing. Again, hoping it goes well. Time will tell. Anyways, you bearded bastards, I really hope you enjoyed yourselves today. I did, I know that much. And I certainly hope to see you next time here with Isden Kerr, the watchful eyes. And until then, you bearded bastards. Mm -hmm.